Hey everyone, welcome back. My name's Maggie and the only thing I love more than makeup is a tag. I actually have an entire tag video playlist. I will link that up above and in the description box. But today we are going to do the 21 questions tag. This was started by Allie Glines and I became familiar with it when uh, Hanya over at Booze Beauty, I'll link her channel down below as well. She's fantastic, go follow her. Uh, she did this video and encouraged me to do it as well. So thank you. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get on into it. It's basically like 21 questions about your makeup habits and certain products. So I'm excited to get on into it. If you like these kind of videos, consider subscribing because I put out new videos every single week. And let's start off with question one. Question number one is, what is the oldest makeup product in your collection? And I'm a little embarrassed to say. So this, this is a judgment-free zone. I saw Make Up Your Mind bring up a product from the 90s that she still uses, so no hate, okay? We're cool. This is the Wet n Wild Lust Palette. They don't make this anymore, and they haven't for a very long time. These six pans, I miss them. Uh, it was the best kind of quality. This is like the ultimate purple palette, and I just have never found its equal. So I believe I purchased this late high school, and at that point it was already gone. So, you know, I'm, I'm 26 now, bought this towards the end of my little high school career, and at that point it was gone, so I had to go on to All Cosmetics Wholesale, which is also no longer around, just to give you an idea of what it took to get this and how old it really is. I do still use it. It doesn't bother my eyes. Uh, the formula holds up like a champ, so. <laughs> Wet and Wild, please bring these back. Thank you very much. The next question is, what is your most recent makeup purchase? And this is kind of hilarious because my most recent purchase at the time I'm filming this is the e.l.f. Acai quad, which is also purple. Different kind of purple, but very cute. I, I've i really been enjoying this. I've been using it a lot, especially this matte shade, the lightest one. It's so beautiful if you just put it all over the lid, up into the crease, a little bit of black liner on the outer corner. Stunning, perfect for spring. It seems like I'm having a bit of a purple eyeshadow renaissance. Kinda like it. The next question is, what was the first makeup product you ever used? And that, I'll have to throw a picture of it up on the screen. It was a Physician's Formula product. And it came with the scratchiest little kabuki brush. And of course, I didn't have any other brushes, so I did use it. I don't think it worked all that well. It was a mineral loose powder foundation. And that was just what I wore. I would sweep that all over my face. I want to say it started in like 8th grade, maybe 7th. And then I slowly started introducing more products. Um, mascara, tinted chapstick. Uh, I wasn't super fancy, but that was the product that got me started. I want to say my mom got it for me. That was just what I used. I like to think that it was subtle, but I'm not sure. I sure hope it was. <laughs> Question number four I really don't have an answer for. It says, what is a makeup trend you used to love but now you hate? I don't really no because the thing about trends is they may look awful on me but beautiful on someone else. I kind of don't have a great answer in that regard. I'm not a fan of strong contouring just because I tried that when I was younger and it just never looked good. I guess that's my answer but it can look gorgeous on other people so it's kind of a mixed bag. Okay so question number five I can actually give an answer. What is a makeup trend you used to hate but now you love? I used to never see the point of having more than one highlighter and now I'd say I'd own I think five or six because it's a different finish and it can catch the light differently. Certain shades can have a different impact. It's a subtle difference but it matters if that's what's important to you. So I used to laugh at people who owned multiple highlighters and now I'm one of them. Uh, I should probably apologize to several people. Question number six is, what is your favorite step in your makeup routine? That's easy, putting on blush. I don't know what it is, but something about when I put blush on makes me feel a little bit more alive. <laughs> I don't know, I love it. And especially with when you're experimenting with different colors or different finishes. Blush is just very special to me. 
and I own several. We'll get to that in a bit. Question number seven is what is a makeup product you can't live without? That would easily be brows. More specifically, I own the NYX Micro Brow. I've used this for years and years. And anytime I try a new product, I'm just reminded that this is the best option. So I have naturally blonde hair. I do dye it and I dye my eyebrows, which are also naturally blonde. The problem is the dye in my eyebrows never really stays. And in addition to having very light eyebrows, they're also very sparse. I'm missing an arch because college Maggie thought she could wax her eyebrows. Turns out, can't. And it never grew back. I feel like having at least my brows on, it just does something for my face, even though they're mostly covered up by my bangs. But I feel like having a, a good solid brow on, that's, that's what kind of makes my face my face. So yeah. I would say my brows more specifically NYX Micro Brow. Great product, would highly recommend. Number eight is what sparked your love for makeup. And I, this story, it's gonna be long and there's gonna be some gaps, but I remember in high school, and this was back when I was still doing the little physician's formula stuff and I hadn't really gotten into makeup yet. We were at a Costco and they had one of those loose mineral makeup kits, so there were three eyeshadows, some brushes, I think a blush, a powder, that might have been it. My mom ended up getting that for me and I used it on the night of one of the high school dances and there was an entire instruction template telling you how to use the brushes with what eyeshadow, etc. I was so inexperienced, this was before I had ever even seen a YouTube tutorial, but the steps that they walked me through, by the end of it, I just, I felt really beautiful. And I couldn't believe that I had put together this seemingly complicated eye look with these three shades and these brushes and somehow made it work. And I really just, I, I felt very glamorous. So that kind of started me off a little bit. And then I remember discovering Makeup Alley, which kind of shows, <laughs> that kind of shows my age a little bit and how and when I got into it, because I was into Makeup Alley before I got into YouTube. Makeup Alley showed me the brand Elf, because I had never heard of it before, and they had a limited line at Target, and I remember the next day I drove to Target and I just bought everything because they were so affordable, like more so than even compared to now, like some of their brushes were a dollar to give you an idea. So I was reading all the reviews, I was making notes of what I wanted to pick up. That was kind of, I guess, my first real haul and thus began my journey into the makeup world. So e.l.f. holds a bit of a special place in my heart, even though I think like half those products that I ended up picking up were discontinued. Like I remember the HD powder and this bulky packaging. It was awful, but worked like a champ. They've either repackaged it or gotten rid of it, but that, that's just one of a few examples I can think of. But that kind of got my, my makeup heart going, and that's when I found more brands, that's when I found Beauty YouTube, and now I'm here. <laughs> Question number nine is, what is the worst makeup look you've ever done? And I would say it's just a whole era of like high school into college, because I loved bold makeup, but I could not pull it off. Um, I We're talking like I would wear glitter to school. Do you understand that? Like I would wear glitter. Like actual, you had to take it out of the pot and put it on a sticky base. Like I did that. I woke up early to do that and I have regrets. <laughs> so yeah, there were Oh, and that like carried from high school into college. Gosh, yeah, it was terrible. And I just, I had a love of glitter. I'm amazed I never damaged my corneas. I'd wear glitter all the time. I also had like no self-control when it came to like blush and bold lipstick. Like you could argue I don't now, but back then it was really bad because I would wear super bold lipstick and then super bold blush and just like the most concentrated amount. I'm glad I'm somewhat better. You could argue that I'm still terrible at makeup, but compared to what it was, was the end of an era. Not a good thing. 
Uh, number 10 is, what is your favorite makeup look you've ever done? That is a great question. I think I have like a go-to look that I really like, and that is kind of your standard browns in the crease, and then a super shimmery gold on the lid, and then a bright red lipstick. I don't know, something about that. It's a very holiday glam kind of look, but it makes me feel very chic, very glamorous, and I feel like it complements my features and my skin tone very nicely. So I don't know if I have any photos of that. If I do, I'll leave them up on the screen, but that's kind of my go-to. Number 11 is what is your favorite drugstore makeup product? And that's a tough one, because I just, I don't know, I've got a lot of drugstore favorites, especially ones that I've continually repurchased over and over again. But I figured I'd ought to give a shout out to the one that I mentioned the most, and that is L'Oreal Infallible and Amber Rush. God help me if they ever discontinue this, I don't know what I'll do, but if you've watched any of my videos involving eyeshadow, I mention this a lot, and that's because it is very beautiful. It's kind of a coppery rose gold, very shimmery, very intense, looks gorgeous on just about any skin tone. And I have been using this for years, never hit pan. That's what surprises me the most. I'm like, I is this bottomless and I just don't know? Who's to say? Question number 12 is, what is your favorite splurge makeup product? And that is an easy Illamasqua blush in Katie. I really don't know what it is about this blush, but anytime I wear it, people will compliment me on it and they'll say that blush looks gorgeous on you. So I kind of like to save it for special occasions or when I know I'm going to be photographed because it is beautiful and I don't know, something about it just really brightens my face. And the formula is very nice, it's a beautiful color. It's hard to formulate a color like this to work as well as it does, but it's very special. I. I picked this up after Illamasqua left Sephora and I think I had to like order it from the UK and pay for customs. It was a whole thing, but I'm glad I did. Question number 13 is what is your most repurchased makeup product? And I'm going to get very specific and very sad. It is the Jordana Best Lash Extreme Volumizing Mascara that I discovered in high school, loved, and I just, I didn't use another mascara for years. So every three months, buy one of these bad boys. If you saw my Jordana video, then you already know. This is no longer available. The brand is no longer available. And I miss this with all of my heart because I just, I will never find a better mascara. I have been loyal to this for like 10 years. You know, like I have high standards <laughs> that other mascaras are just gonna have to try their damnedest to me. But yeah, I. Jordana. Love it very much. Miss it all the time. Number 14 is what is your earliest makeup memory? And I would say going to the Clinique counters with my mom because she is very strategic and as a result so am I. She would always make sure to buy a product, like any Clinique product that she was out of, when there was a gift with purchase. And I remember at one point, I used to have the bag, but then it got old and gross and I had to get rid of it. Um, she gave me the bag with some of the little extras, and one was a Clinique blush, like a little mini one, back when they did the green packaging. And yeah, I used the bejesus out of that blush. It, it went fast. So that was my biggest memory, and that's probably why when I initially started buying more expensive makeup, my first go was the Clinique counter and eventually the MAC counter as well. Question number 15 is, what is your favorite place to shop for makeup? Now, you may say this is biased because I used to work there, but it's gotta be Ulta. They have such a great selection. The point system is fantastic. I, you could say I'm a big Ulta fan. And I know, gotta acknowledge my bias. I was a former employee. I did really use that discount, but it's a good, it's a good place. They're kind of giving Sephora a run for their money. Question number 16 is, what is the most underrated makeup product that you own? And I really just wanted to give a shout out because I've actually repurchased this specific shade. This is the Sephora uh, Rouge Gel Lip Liner in the shade The Red, number 12, The Red. And I went through this so fast that I had to repurchase it. I'm a makeup enthusiast. I own several lip liners and I repurchased this. It's 
beautiful. The entire line is something like I'd love to pick up more shades um, as I use up what I have. But this is such a gorgeous orangey red glossy lip liner. And what I love about this is it does function very well as a lip liner. It won't bleed or anything like that. But if you just want to fill your lips in with this, it has a gorgeous finish. And I think it works well like as a singular lip color, which is what I've used it for a lot. And I just never hear anyone talk about this or the Sephora line as a whole, which I think is pretty fabulous. So that's a little tip from me to you. Go pick this up. You won't regret it. Question 17 is, what is the most overrated makeup product you own? And I feel like I'm going to make some enemies here. The Milani eyeshadow primer is just okay. <laughs> it's all right. I feel like, and maybe this is just because I have really sensitive eyes, but when I apply this, I notice a bit of tingling and I don't like that. And also, ever since I discovered the Ultimate Eye Primer, that is all I use and all I will ever use. Assuming they don't pull a Jordana and get rid of it, which would just break my heart. But yeah, I've been holding on to this just because I have it. I keep trying to use it up. I do use it for swatches though, so it does serve a purpose. But yeah, I've just never gotten the hype. And apologies to Emily Noel because I know she really loves that product. And sorry, I just don't. <laughs> Question number 18 is, what is a discontinued makeup product that you wish would come back? Yeah, I don't know. Can't answer it. Number 19 is, where do you go for makeup inspiration? I follow a lot of people on Instagram who are very bold with experimenting with eye looks. A good example of that is Bad to the Brow. And then Julia K. March does a lot of interesting color story arrangements. So I would say like Instagram for people who do very bold eye looks or are great at arranging certain color stories. I really like that. And then sometimes I'll just, if I have a palette from a certain brand and I don't know what I'm doing, I might search the hashtag or look through that brand account just to get an idea. But yeah, Instagram's been pretty good for that. And um, also just making me realize like, wow, I really need to step up my eyeshadow game. We're working on it. Question number 20 is what do you hope to see less of in makeup's future? I'm really kind of over giant palettes these days. I have like my giant Coastal Scents empty palette where I put all my single shadows, but I mean, if it's bigger than like an Alter Ego palette, I kind of tend to pass over it. And I think just based on the success of the e.l.f. Bite Size shadows, we're gonna kind of start to see hopefully, this is just me predicting, a shift to smaller, more curated palettes. And I really like that idea. I think the average consumer might appreciate that too. Yeah, I'm just excited to see if this trend catches on and what kind of color stories we'll see from brands because that means that the companies will have to be more intentional with the shades that they use. And I'm just really interested to see how that plays out. Question number 21 is what do you hope to see more of in makeup's future? And I think that's pretty easy. I'm really hoping that a lot of brands will kind of bring a more inclusive lens into their products, not just with foundations and concealers, because I think that's only one part of it. You know, face palettes, eyeshadow palettes, something like Milani just released a travel-friendly palette and they had a light version and a deeper version. And I think products like that, I, I'd like to see more of those, just keeping every consumer in mind. So I'm really hoping that we see a lot more of that in the future and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that more brands catch on. Anyways, that is it for the 21 questions makeup tag. Thank you to Allie for creating this. Thank you to Hanya for encouraging me to do this. And if you would like to participate in this, then I tag you. I will leave the questions linked down below in case you'd like to answer them in the comments. And thank you all for watching. This is going to be a long video. I can already tell. But I appreciate you all sticking around, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!